This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by heavyweight, only once beaten by Tyson Fury, of course, Otto Valin, and in a great position right now, I think it's fair to say. We, we've been talking for a long time, on and off doing these interviews, and I've got to say, given how you've done it, the hard way very much so, I'm delighted that you are now in the IBF number two position and in sight of a world title shot. How, how are you feeling about it all? I feel great. I'm coming off a good win against Murat Gassiev a few weeks back, and I got the number two spot with the IBF. So things can really, uh, things really look bright right now. So I'm hoping that maybe I get to fight Hergovich for the title with the IBF, and uh, that would be a dream come true, obviously. And I think that would be a great fight for me. So I'm really hoping that would happen. Now, I said you've obviously done it the hard way, none more so than that fight against Gassiev out in Turkey. You weren't the guy brought there to win the fight, of course, but you did pull it off on a split decision. Many people thought it should have been unanimous. What was the whole experience like of going out there, maybe having the, the promotional side against you in this one? <clears throat> well, it was a calculated risk. I knew that Gassiev was a good fighter, but we felt like he hasn't really fought anyone in heavyweight. And Usyk, Usyk, of course, beat him. And we felt like he was struggling with southpaws. And we had a good idea of what he would bring. So I uh, knew that he was a good puncher. So I wanted to be smart out there, which I was. And I stick, stuck to my game plan. I didn't engage too much and uh, just pretty much outboxed him. I felt in the fight that it was very clear. I felt like I won almost every round. So I was very surprised when I heard there was a split decision. So my heart kind of dropped, but then I got the got the win anyway. So so it was amazing. I mean, probably I don't know if I've been that happy before. So I feel like I'm in a really good position now. But all in all, we had a pretty good time out there. They, I, I would say, they took pretty good care of us. Uh, you know, uh, walking out to the fight, they played the wrong song, <laughs> and um, <laughs> the ring, the ropes, the ropes in the ring. Must have been very hard or something because I had it looked like I had been whipped after on my back, and I had I still have I still have uh, bruises from the fight and it's been three weeks now, so like showering after the fight was terrible. It was just uh, that was pretty painful. And then you know I had a vacation in Turkey, the week after, you know going in the pool in the ocean and stuff. Just just uh, painful with my back because I had those. Those uh, bruises from the fight was amazing, but I never, I never experienced that before. Crazy. Um, how satisfying is it? Because previously you were probably best known to most fans for that tussle <clears throat> you gave Tyson Fury, pushed him harder than pretty much anyone except perhaps Deontay Wilder, of course. And you'd stacked up, I think it's six wins in a row now since. But this is by far the biggest one, the highest level one, and people kept saying. He needs to get a good win before he can have a title shot. And people were avoiding you, I think it's fair to say. You came close to a big fight on a number of occasions. How satisfying is it to go away, fight someone considered a, a top talent and come away with the win? Yeah, that's why I say that I've probably never been that happy because I felt like all the hard work I put in over the years, I, f I feel like I finally got a fight and a win that people really respect and be able to look back to and say, you know, he beat he beat Gassiev. That's a great win. So, I'm I'm really happy about that. I gave Fury a good fight, but it was still a loss, of course. So, I'm really happy, and I've had some some tough times, and now I feel like things are finally starting to turn around for me. There was a lot of talk before your fight with Gassiev about Anthony Joshua's position with the IBF because he was in that slot behind Hergovic before the um, eliminator fight between yourself and Gassiev. And people are already talking, I think even Eddie Hearn may have mentioned it, that should Tyson Fury give up the IBF title, it's a way back, if you like, for Anthony Joshua to the top of the, the sport um, for that mm -hmm. IBF belt. Were you hearing all of this kind of conversation while you were building up for this fight? Yeah, well, I didn't pay much attention to it. This was supposed to be a WBA uh, intercontinental fight, but the WBA, I think they pulled the plug last minute for some reason. They, I think they... You know, I don't know if they didn't get along with IBF or something, but I mean, I didn't pay much attention to that. So 
Uh, I was just focusing on the fight, and and now it's, it's nice that I'm the number two. Yeah, and it seems all but clear now that it will be yourself and Hergovic. Obviously, this relies on Tyson Fury giving up, sorry, Alexander Usyk giving up the IBF title or Tyson Fury, depending on who comes out on top in that signed for undisputed clash. <clears throat> um, but what's your understanding from the IBF since the fight of where you stand? Well, I'm, I'm number two. So if the, if the title gets becomes available, then I'll get the fight for it against Hergovic. So that's, that's what I know. With Fury, you know, you never know what he's going to do and whatnot. So I really hope they get that fight on with Usyk and Fury. I think it's good for boxing and everything. And it might be good for me too. Yeah, of course. And I'm sure you've looked a lot at Philip Hergovic as a fellow contender rising through the ranks. What what do you make of him as a fighter? I think I think Hergovic is a good fighter. He has, you know, solid background, solid amateur experience. And... Um, you know, he's, he's undefeated as a pro, of course. But the last two fights, you see some 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 holes there, I think, with Shang and um, Dempsey McKean, right? So I think they're both southpaws, actually. But I see some holes and not much, maybe not the technique and stuff, but, but maybe mental a little bit. Almost looked like he wanted to quit with Shang and kind of felt the same way when he fought Dempsey McKean. It was... Uh, certain spots in there didn't look that good and didn't really look like he wanted to be in there sometimes. So it's kind of strange to me. And as you say, he's unbeaten, but your only defeat has come against most people's pick as the best heavyweight in the world right now. So you've certainly <laughs> fought the, the superior opposition perhaps overall, although obviously Zhang is a, a good win for him now in, in hindsight. Right. I, I mean, I think I think it's a great fight for me. I think it will be... Uh, a huge opportunity to win the heavyweight championship, and Sweden hasn't have a has, hasn't had a heavyweight champion since Ingemar Johansson. Mm. And that was sixty years ago, so that would be that would be amazing. Is there a, a fair chance that you might have to travel to your opponent's backyard, or, or certainly a place of his team's choosing once again? And and if that is the case, has the Gassiev win put you in a a better position to adapt to those challenges? Yeah, I don't, I don't pay much mind to where the fight's going to be in that. But I have a hard time seeing the fight taking place in Croatia. Uh, we will see what's going to happen, uh, who's going to be the promoter. Uh, so, I mean, I, I have a hard time seeing it's going to take place there. We, but we see. You never know. And if it takes place there, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've been fighting almost my whole career. Uh, you know, I've been fighting almost everywhere. So, I'm used to it. And obviously, Eddie Hearn co-promotes Hergovic. You're well known to UK fans. I guess there must be at least a, a decent chance that the fight takes place over here in the UK. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm open to that. That'd be nice. I think that UK fans are really good. So that, that would be... I'm not against that. Glad to hear it. Now, mentioned um, Fury a couple of times already in passing. You are obviously linked with him on a regular basis. You did give him that... Horrible fight and, and, you know, it was cut and bleeding. It's an image that stayed with people for a long time. It's rare that we've seen him that troubled, um, certainly since. He's got this crossover fight with uh, UFC, MMA, or former UFC, MMA superstar in Francis Ngannou. First question on that, I guess, is will you be watching it? Is it free? <laughs> I can see it for <laughs> free. Not, I want, I'm not, I'm not going to pay for it. I'm not going to pay for it. I think, I think it's going to be... An easy fight for Fury. You know, he goes as long as he wants it to go, I think. I mean, I've been watching Ngannou a little bit. And he, he's he's a great MMA fighter, but this is boxing. And he's fighting the best boxer in the heavyweight division. So, so it's, it's going to be a really hard fight for him. And the same thing, if Fury would have gone to MMA, he would have got destroyed also. So, I think that Fury is going to win. And it all depends on how long he wants to carry him, I think. Yeah, and there's kind of a whole moral or ethical argument about this. So one side says, you know, boxing's a short career. You guys are putting your lives on the line. If there's no mandatory obligation, which there isn't currently for Fury with the WBC, earn as much money as you can. <clears throat> the flip side of that is, should the reigning world heavyweight champion be wasting one of his few appearances, outings per year on what is essentially an exhibition that you wouldn't expect him to have any trouble winning? 
Well, what's your? Where do you sit on that? I think it's it's hard. I understand why Fury is doing it. He's probably making a, a ton of money, and to have a you know pretty easy fight. So I mean, I I mean I I would probably do the same to be honest. But it's it's it would be nice to see him defend the title against the top fifteen guy. You know, his last fight was against Chisora. Now he's fighting in Ganu. So you know, start looking at things. It's it's not great. If you if you be more active and fight more, maybe I give him a pass. But you know, like I said, I understand why he does it, and and to make that kind of money for for a pretty easy fight, you know, I understand it. And obviously, the world title is your your end goal, and you're very close to it now. How much? How does a rematch with Fury rank against that in terms of your objectives in your career? Because he is it is your only defeat. Right, I would like to fight Fury again, of course. But right now, I'm really just thinking about the title. If I get a shot at the title, win the title, that would be amazing. And first and foremost, and then we take it from there. Maybe get a, a rematch with Fury if he's still the champion. And you know, there's got to be a lot of opportunities out there if that happens. Yeah, I think because a lot of people have said, oh, you know, how seriously will we take the IBF title holder if it's from a vacant title that Fury or Usyk have given up? But I think Anthony Joshua would never have ascended to the peak in the first place if it hadn't been for Fury vacating the IBF title in the first place, obviously via a couple of other people, Charles Martin most notably. What, what's your view on that? Will Can you win a world title but perhaps not be seen as the man in the division? And, and does that bother you? It doesn't bother me, but I can understand it. You know, we all... I mean, I rate Tyson Fury as the best heavyweight right now. I would love to have a rematch with him and, and beat him. Then I would be the man. But I think that, I mean, I understand people uh, looking at him as the best guy and maybe you sick too. But I'm not bothered by that. I just want to win the title and then take it from there. Now, talk about Anthony Joshua. He's someone you know well. You've been linked to him as a pro a couple of times. You fought him as an amateur, of course, as well. He's making a bit of news this week. I don't know if the fact that it's Fury Fight Week is coincidental in that. Um, but he's talking about changing trainers once again. Um, he's hinted he might still fight Deontay Wilder on the same show as Usyk and Fury. And I think what's got the most press, certainly in the UK, has been his decision recently, I don't know if you saw this, to go into an isolation retreat, uh, including a dark space that he spent apparently four days in. Um what what do you make of this uh, Joshua stuff? Yeah, there was a lot there. I, I I have heard about this retreat. I don't really I've read some headlines about it. I, I don't really know what it is. Uh and I don't know what it would do to him, but changing trainers again, I I didn't know that. And I think that, you know, seems like he hasn't worked so far. And I don't I honestly I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, with whoever he has. I think that <clears throat> Something is not right if you keep changing the trainer. He had a very good run with McCracken, and mm -hmm. they, of course, are not together anymore. Uh, but that might have might have been the best fit for him. You know, he kind of grew up with him, spent all those years with him, and had all those successes. So sometimes you need a change, but it's not always for the better. And it's, that's what it seems like right now. He... Um, doesn't seem like he's gotten better with the new trainers. So it's going to be hard for him if he just, if he just keeps changing the trainer because at some point you got to just trust the trainer that you have and make him trust you that you're not going to leave him so that you can both build together and, and uh, you know, start winning fights. And if he were to go in with Deontay Wilder next time out, given, as you said, his recent form's not been particularly impressive, perhaps his first fight of a new trainer as well, if, if what he said is true. Would you be concerned for him in, in that fight with Wilder? I wouldn't be concerned for him because he's boxing and sure. somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. But I think that I think that Wilder would be the favourite. You know, Wilder, you know, he's very very, very big puncher. Josh is a big puncher too, but Josh has just been hesitant lately. And I, I think that when you fight Wilder, you really got to believe in yourself and, and be able to go places that you really need to do. Because if you're just trying to box and, and do what he was doing his last few fights, it's going to be very hard against Wilder and eventually he's going to land. 
And with Fury Usyk, I think you've backed Fury to win that fight in the past. Saw some comments from Usyk earlier this <clears> week <throat> or late last week talking about some injuries, long-standing injuries that he needs to address and saying he'd need a 14-week camp for the Fury fight. Fury then countered this in an interview, I believe, earlier today, saying uh, Usyk has to fight him in December, otherwise he's in breach of contract. I'm not sure how true this is, because when we originally heard it was December or January, I think everyone assumed that was in case something happened to Fury against Ngannou, you know, a cut or, or an elbow or anything like that. So yeah. what, what do you make of the whole back and forth between them? And, and do you still back Fury to win that undisputed fight? I do back Fury to win. I think that he's 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 got, he's got to be the favorite. Fury's a very good fighter. He's a bigger guy, and I don't think that Fury's gonna win. But it might turn out to be a, a pretty good fight, and uh, we see. You know, Usyk is a good southpaw, so we see what he can bring. But Fury's got to be the favorite. But it's it's pretty interesting. I I think I've heard Usyk speak about injuries before. I feel like he said that before also, and uh, now saying that he needs 14 weeks. Well, he better start training. I mean, he's, he's known this for a while now. So I feel like there shouldn't be any excuses unless he has some real injuries that so he can't fight. But, uh, you know, if he's not training, that's, that, doesn't sound, that doesn't sound right. Should be training. And I'm, I'm sure he is. You know, you never know with these guys. And you, know, you don't know with Fury. You don't know with Usyk what's going on. So so I guess we'll see what happens. But But... I feel like I feel like Usyk, unless he has some serious injuries that it makes that's, that that makes him unable to train, he should really be training now and be ready for December. But I, I'll be kind of surprised if the fight happens in December, especially since Fury is fighting soon. So we we'll see. I'm hoping that they're gonna fight, but we we'll see what happens. And what about the impact on you? Do you expect Hergovic to be your next fight, or, or will you have an interim fight? Because there's obviously an element of risk involved in that. It all depends on how long this takes to play out. If it if it takes too long, then I'm gonna have an interim fight and uh, fight somebody in between. And if if Fury Nusik fights in August, no, in December, sorry, then we're probably gonna find out pretty soon if I get to fight for the title or not. So, so yeah, it's a tricky balance, I suppose, between having that interim fight to stay active so that you're you know ready for the Hergovic fight, but also the risk involved in you know, not just losing, but if you get cut or all the things we talk about with Fury. Right. That's that's the thing, but I can't just sit out either. I, w- I want to be, I want to fight. I think that that's uh, going to be the best for me, especially since I've had a hard time We're getting real fights lately. But coming off a good win now, of course, but I want to I wanna keep that going and, and have some good fights. And just before I let you go, I just want to get some predictions from you for this weekend's event. Not Fury and Garner, as you've already made that quite clear, but the, the more competitive fights, certainly on paper, that are on the card. Some of these guys you might not know that well, and that's fine if you don't. But let's start with two I'm sure you're aware of. Martin Bacoli and Carlos Takam. Two, well, one old war horse and maybe one young war horse going at it there. What, what do you make of that one? <clears throat> My feeling is that the Bacoli should win. I haven't watched him that much, but I know he beat Joker. That was a good win. So I'm I'm probably gonna watch that fight if I can if I can see it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Team stream. That's all I'm gonna yeah. say. <laughs> um, yeah. just kidding, Frank, if you're watching, and Bob. Um, we've also got a, a British heavyweight title fight taking place outside the UK for one of the few times in its uh, esteemed history between Fabio Wardley, who I'm sure you are aware of, and David Adelaide, who you may not be, but he's a Frank Warren unbeaten heavyweight prospect. Do you know uh, Adelaide much? I know he's been in camp with Fury, for example. Yeah, I don't know him much. I've seen him a little bit. I've seen him against Sokolowski. Hmm. And so I actually did in the final with Fury on the court in, at Wembley. Yes. I think I saw him there. And then uh, Wardley, i barely seen him. I might have, didn't he fight Sokolowski too? Uh, early not. in his career, possibly. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Yeah, but I, I don't know them that well. But I saw that brawl that they had. That was kind of terrible. I felt like, yeah. you know, it was, you know, risking the fight like that. Because didn't he get cut more or something? Yeah, yeah, he got yeah. cut. I think it was just the, to the to the side of his eye. But it seems all okay. I saw him last week. It seems to be healed up now. But yeah, it was that's good. High yeah. mouth. 
at the time. Yeah. I don't I don't know who's gonna win. I'm hoping uh we get a good fight. And uh I really don't know to be honest. No, no, that's fair enough. And Joseph yeah. Parker's fighting Simon King. I don't know if you know much about Simon King. Yeah, no, that name has been thrown out to me before and somebody I wanted to fight, so I think that Joseph Parker should have handled him. Are you uh, any any envy of not being on that show as it is almost an all-heavyweight card? There's one non-heavyweight fight on there. It would have been great, of course, to be out there, but I just uh, coming off a good win here, so I'm happy where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, well, it's best best moment of your career so far, surely, and, and hopefully only going to get better. Exactly. Great stuff. Otto, really appreciate your time. I uh, hope you get a date in the diary soon and, and that it's confirmed it is for the world title. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Anytime. Take care. Speak right. soon. You too.